if the ground is testing, I think he's going to run a big race. Could be one of the, the top class horses in the uh, middle distance division. He's almost a bit of a forgotten horse. This has been his plan. I think she's going to take all the beats. I think she's far too overpriced. I wasn't going to say it, but you said it for me. I was there, Sam. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel for our weekend preview. And we've got four races to preview coming your way. Two races from Newbury on Saturday, the two group races there. And then we go over to France for the Sunday for the French 1000 and 2000 guineas. And we've really enjoyed the Dance Festival this week. Jack and I are going to be discussing sort of Derby and Oaks hopes in our feature video next week. So we'll get into those next week. We won't discuss those now. Let's get straight into the British action. And we'll start off with the group three on the card on Saturday. The Al Ryan stakes over a mile and a half. Your favourite here is Al Assi, who's your four to five favourite. Logician, two to one. Thunderous is seven to one. Ranch Hand, 11 to one. Rainbow Dreamer, 28. And SIF is 40 to one, the outside of the lot. Now, Jack, from a distance, uh, I look at this as a, a two-horse race, potentially. Thunderous really has been a bit disappointing, I'd say, um, so far this season. I haven't been too impressed with him. Logician, on a bit of a recovery mission, um, has actually won a handicap over the course and distance. That was in July 2019. Obviously, the St. Ledger winner was, was a winner six on the bounce um, before a, a bit of a flop in October uh, last year. Um, Jack Alassi, though, at the start of the season was very, very impressive here in the John Porter Stakes, or what used to be known as the John Porter Stakes, um, and looks like he could be one of the, the top class horses in the uh, middle distance division this season. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I think it's as simple as it revolving around him. I think that the manner in which he won at Newbury was quite nice. I mean, it, it didn't exactly beat a great field, but I think without a fight, who's who was second that day is a nice colt since it's come third in a listed race. So it's an okay bit of form, but he did it very comfortably. Logician, there's a lot of question marks there. A, the ground, there's a lot of forecast rain, probably won't want the soft ground. And of course, he was beaten by Yuk and Glenn last time we saw him. So he's, he's, he's had a lot of time off. So two to one, I think, so a ridiculously short price. I see the money's coming for Al Arzi and I just don't see him losing. Yeah, it's not really a race that obviously I'd be looking to have a betting because I do think Al Arzi is probably going to be the one to go and win this. Jackie, if Logician can get back, I mean, obviously he was, he was six races unbeaten, the ledger winner, and um, obviously he had that flop last season. If he can get back to his best and, and, and like the style we've seen him win in those previous races prior to October, do you think that he does have a chance of beating Al Assi here, or do you think Punters are definitely taking a huge risk basket backing him? No, I mean, if he does get back to his best, I think, of course, he does have a good chance. He is he is a ledger winner, but I, that's just too much of a question mark for me. I mean, you're looking at 2019 now when he was at his best, so he's had to overcome, obviously, a lot of injury troubles. So, for me, as you said, it would just be observing, and I hope he can do it, but I think Al Azi is the one to beat. Yeah, not a betting race for myself and Jack, but we both think that Al Assi is going to win the Al Ryan Stakes, the Group 3 on the card, on Saturday. Right, we move on to the big one on Saturday. It's the Al Shakab Lockinge Stakes, the Group 1, over a mile. Your favourite here, a well-backed favourite over the last few months, is Palace Pier, is your 7-4 to four on favourite. Lopi Fernandez is 6-1. to one. My Oberon is 9-1. to one. Safe Voyage, 10's top rank is 10. Century Dream is 16 to 1. Lord Glitters 25s and 33 to 1 bar those. Jack, is it as easy as we make out this race? Does it just revolve around Palace Pier improving on from his run that he had at Sandown the Bet 36 mile and, and just going and winning this? Yes and no. I think 8.15 is a short price, um, especially if you look at Alazi in the pre previous race. I think Evens is probably a lot better value wise mm. up against a lot um logician than um Palace Pier is here. He clearly has the, the ability. We saw at three, we saw that in the in the bet three six five mile. Very ground versatile. So if the rain comes, no problem. That that performance out in France was probably the pick of the bunch. I thought yeah. that was sensational. But um as you say, there was a, there's a couple others in there that I think could definitely run well. Lopi Fernandez, really impressive his reappearance. He's clearly come on as a now as a four year old. So mm. again at a mile, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. He'll want the rain to stay away, that's for sure. The others safe voyage, and that's the complete opposite. It. he'll definitely want the rain to come now if the ground is testing i think he's going to run a big race i mean he was third in the qe2 a couple of years ago third in the pre de la foray uh, last year behind one master and i think if we get uh, the rain he'll run his race yet again but as we say it is all about palace pier yeah 
uh, Palace Pier. I mean, a lot of people critiquing the horse, saying that he was asked a fair bit in his last run at Sandown. Like, you really can't critique it. Like, Gosden horses, they weren't fully fit. He even admitted that the horse was only at 80% of his level. So we know the horse is going to be better than that. But you could say the same about Lopi Fernandez. Lopi Fernandez went and won a listed race at the start of this season. And didn't really beat too much. But I know from you, you see these Aiden O'Brien horse, we talk about it all the time. You know, they come on massively from their first run. I can see him coming on um, a fair bit. And the ground at the moment is good to soft in the description. By the time this video goes up, I probably think we, we'd be looking at the same ground. Um, whether the rain comes overnight on Friday, I don't uh, don't know for certain. Um, but I think that Lopi Fernandez personally is, is slightly overpriced in here. Um, at six, I think he should be a little bit shorter considering Palace Peerage is sort of seven to four on. I think the horse at what, what did I say, sort of around six to one, I think is a fair price. I do think that my overrun, I thought that the run in the Earl of Sefton Stakes was a very nice win. Um, obviously, Global Giant didn't quite run um, his race for, for Gosden, or, or sorry, Gosden's now. I feel like I've got to address it as Gosden's rather than for Gosden, <laughs> yeah. um, with Fady now training alongside John. Um, I think another horse here who, who could run big at a price is Century Dream. Um, who's a course and distance winner, and um, he's also a Celebration Mile winner at Goodwood. Um, I think he'll actually, I think someone like Central Dean probably actually like going around the bend. I think Goodwood could be a target, he could be a big price for something like a Sussex Stakes later in the season as well. Um, I love sort of bringing up the Sussex Stakes, Jack. We, we bigged it up last season to be such a decent race, and a, a few horses unfortunately oh. got uh, pulled out, but it was still an absolute corker. It was probably one of the races of the season, in my opinion. Um, and, and you were lucky enough to be there. Just oh, I was outside. there. I wasn't going to say it, but you said it for me. I was there, Sam. I was but, there. I'm going to put the photo up at the back of the racing post. You see this this very very short man in a tiny little white shirt. That was me. There we are. Was, we were that there. That was Jack. And uh, Jack and I are actually going to be at Goodwood next Friday. Um, I, I, I think I mentioned in our uh, Dante Festival preview video that we were actually going to get up to Goodwood and do a vlog for you guys as one of our feature videos coming to you soon. Our first day back on track, potentially sort of speak to a few race goers, see what it's like to be back on track. It'd be very difficult to speak to jockeys with sort of the separation of different zones now. Um, so it's unlikely we'll be able to do that, but we will do our best. But we'll speak to a few punters and show you Goodwood as a course as well and what it's like to be on track uh, during these tough times. Um, so for Jack and I, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting race. We both think that Palace Pier could potentially be worth taking on, not really at a price that we'd be taking. Um, but Jack, uh, for Jack, you said it was uh, was it safe voyage for yourself, Jack? Yeah, it'd be safe voyage for myself. Yeah, safe voyage for Jack, and I'll be with Lope Fernandez in the lock-in stakes. Now on to the French racing on Sunday. Jack, êtes-vous prêt à préveiller à la Guinée? Oui. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, if you want the translation for that, I actually went and learned this. So that is, Jack, would you like to preview the Guineas? Yeah, spot on. That was actually so you answered watch. well, you answered well. Um, let's kick off with the French 2000 Guineas. Poetic Fair, your um, Newmarket 2000 Guineas winner is in here, your 5-2 to two favourite. St. Mark's Basilica, the Dewhurst winner from last season, is 3-1. to one. Seal Away is 8-1. to one. Parchman is also 8. Memento is 10-1. to one. Policy of Truth, 10s. Normandy Bridge, 12s. Prince Lancelot, 16s and 20-1. to one and bigger the rest. Now, I know that I'm pretty confident that Poetic Flair is definitely going to be going here. Um, we didn't get to see St. Mark's Pacifica in the 2000 Guineas. Usually we see a Dewhurst winner go to the 2000 Guineas. Not seeing him here. He's a half-brother to Magna Grecia, who was a 2000 Guineas winner himself. The one race that I do want to focus on a little bit, Jack, is that the Prix de Fontainebleau, the first five home in that race are all being seen here. Policy of Truth won that race with Maxime Guillon on board. Parchman was the favourite in that race. Parchman was actually one of the only French horses entered in the 2000 Guineas at Newmarket. Um, so Favre obviously fought a lot of this horse and the horse actually finished fifth, which was a, a bit disappointing. But Favre's horses, you know, they tend to need the run um, and he could definitely come on. I think the straight mile might be a, a little bit better for him. And it's good to soft out there. And this horse's uh, two wins as a two-year-old was on heavy. So he probably wouldn't mind the, uh, the rain coming. Uh, but for myself, Jack, I'm going to be with the, the French and it's going to be Seal Away. I think he's a, a decent bet. Here. He's rated 128, the highest rated French horse, I think, in the race. He's only four pounds uh, lower in the weights than Poetic Flair. I think if he brings his pre Jean Luc Lagardère form back into this, where he beat Nando Prado by eight lengths on the Arc weekend, I just think that he has a really, really decent chance. Um, and I'd be siding with him. I just think that he's slightly overpriced in here. Um, at eight to one, I think he should be far short. I think he's got a hell of a lot of ability and interest. Interested to see how he goes in this. What about for yourself? 
Yeah, well, I'm with you with Cedarway. I mean, I, I think that one of the things that's going to be certain is the ground's going to be testing. I mean, we're good to soft at the moment, but if you look at the weather forecast, we've got thunder, we've got raining cats and dogs out there. So I think we're going to be seeing at least soft ground, and especially on the um, on the Sunday as well. So for me, Poetic Flair is the one to beat. Of course, it was on good to firm, but he's quite ground versatile, so that shouldn't be a problem. St. Mark's Basilica is an interesting one. Um, I probably would side with him if it wasn't for how the Ballydore Battalion ran in the 2000 Guineas. I mean, it was it was too bad to be true, wasn't it? So you see the three-year-olds this year, probably best left alone. Of course, you have about Bolshoi Ballet and some other great three-year-olds coming out of there. But for me, at that price, he's he's quite short after such a long break. But yeah, I think the Prix de Fontainebleau is a great place to start. And I think Sealaway finished second that day on good ground. We'll want every every more inch of rain will just be better for him. And I think he's almost a bit of a forgotten horse. This has been his plan for quite a long time. And I think he's slightly overpriced. So for me, I think he's going to run a good race, especially if the rain comes. Yeah, I'm um, completely here uh, in terms of the race. I think Jack's kind of hit the nail on the head there. I think St. Mark's Basilica, um, he's worth taking. I'm actually really interested in seeing the the 2000 Guineas horse for Ballydor out next time out. I'm hoping that they run much better and we see them back to winning ways and, and you know they, they come on to be decent three yards competing in the decent group races throughout the season so for myself and jack the pre de fontaine blue form could work out quite nicely but we both like seal away in the french 2000 guineas okay on to the 1000 guineas out there now and mother earth is your five to two favorite Philomen is seven to two miss amulet is six to one sweet lady is 13 to two king's harlequin eight to one lullaby moon is 10s. Silvestri is 12 to 1. Reina Madre is 12 to 1 and 16 to 1 and bigger the rest. Uh, Jack, we get to see the 1,000 Guineas winner potentially back here, Mother Earth, who I did mention after when we did the Guineas review that Mother Earth is definitely the one sort of free roll I'm quite excited about in some ways. Out, of, You know, the Phillies race was definitely a lot better than the Colts, in my opinion. Um, Philomen is in here um, as your second favourite. I actually see this horse more of a, of a, a Prix de la Diane winner. Um, or a chance in that race. I mean, it's going to be a decent race, that, especially if Indigo Girl goes over there for the Gosdens team. Um, but that horse is unbeaten. I think she's probably better over 10 furlongs, despite winning as a two-year-old over the distance. But my selection here is a fairly decent price, 12 to 1. That's Silvestri um, in here, who she finished ahead second in the Prix de la Grotte, um, but finished ahead of uh, Kings Harlequin, who prior to that race had won a group uh, three, I think it was. Beat Sweet Lady in that race, who was a listed winner, beating Tiger Tanaka by about six lengths. See the Rose was also a Group 3 winner, uh, finished head of that horse. Rougier was a Group 3 winner, finished head of that horse. Um, and four of those are in here, and I think she's going to take all the beating. I think she's far too overpriced. I, I do think Mother Earth will probably be the one to beat, if definitely going here. Um, I think she'll be really tough to beat. But I think Silvestri is, is far too big a price at 12 to 1. Jack, did you look at this, find a big price, or are you siding with one at the top of the market? I've kind of gone for in between something at a solid price. I think for me, there's two to take out of it. I think Rafe Be uh, Beckett's Philly, Lullaby Moon, if she goes, she has a great chance, especially if the ground is testing. I mean, I was really uh, impressed with her group three win on heavy ground at Shanti. And she's just been coming on really nicely. I mean, she was rated 79 when she went into Handicap Company first time out last year. She's beaten big fields, smaller fields, classier fields. And I think a mile could perhaps be to the maximum of her limitation because she did start off as a sprinter over six furlongs. So that would be my, my cause for concern per se. But for me, it comes out the same race as you and that sweet lady for Francis Graffard who actually went off favourite that day yep. for that. Now, she didn't really like the good ground when she was fourth. But as you said, she beat Target and Arca by six lengths in a listed contest in March. So she'll definitely stay the trip. She's been seen over nine furlongs and 10 furlongs. So if it does turn into a bit of a staying contest and a, a bit of a mud bath out there by that time, I think she's got a stamina on her side and I think she's an all right each way price. There we go. Okay, to a decent price. A sweet lady at around 13 to 2 for Jack and Silvestri for myself at 12 to 1 in the French 1000 guineas. Right, thanks for watching. As always, Jack and I really appreciate you guys watching our videos. Give it a like if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got plenty of subscribers coming our way and the more subscribers we get, the more we really want to bring you guys videos. So thanks so much for those. We're going to be back uh, with you guys on Tuesday where our feature video is going to be an Oaks and Derby chat. So we'll be talking through some of the key Oaks and Derby trials. 
um, and who we actually fancy for the race at this stage. And talking about the Derby and Oaks, our first video from our new studio will come um, on the 3rd of June, I think it will be, for the Derby and Oaks preview. Jack and I are really excited to bring that video to you guys and, and bring a new look to your channel. So do let us know down in the comments who you're looking forward to seeing this weekend out on track. And I hope you have a really good weekend. Thanks for watching.